Hello guys, my name is Bakamu Levy and I'm here to show you how to convert uh, 2D vector shapes into a 3D using Illustrator and Cinema 4D. I have enjoyed this workflow ever since I've learned it because now it sort of shortens my time instead of modeling things in 3D I just sort of start here and then put it in 3D and it's like you have no know, so easy it works for me tons of the time and I just wanted to share that with you guys first of all you need illustrator uh, any version would work <clears throat> I have my vector here uh, unfortunately this doesn't work with rasterized shapes it only works with vector and you uh, when you have it doesn't matter the hierarchy I'm like when taking it to after effects this is different taking it to cinema 4d is you know the hierarchy of your layers doesn't matter at all even if it's in one layer or two plus three layers doesn't matter so assume you are done with your vector shape and you want to convert it so all you have to do is save it <coughs> I'm pressing command shift s and then I'm going to save it mm, I need to save it where the methods tutorials and 2d to 3d yes. and then I will say 2d to 3d first of all this is the important part of it all you want to save it with Illustrator version 8 because for some reason it's the only one that works <laughs> uh, or the one that works better and you save it now you are done in Illustrator so excuse that uh, go to create a new project in Cinema 4D and then I'll take that AI file of version 8 and then drop it here say okay and then now you will see my vectors they will come out as splines and then I'm gonna zero that out to put it on the center so there you go this is my little helicopter I don't know really uh, for demonstration purposes this will work so here are my splines and they are grouped together. So what I'm gonna do in order to turn this into 3D, I'm literally gonna press Shift plus C to search something called Extrude. I'll search Extrude here, press Enter. So, and then I'm going to drag one path into it and then the extrude will turn this into 3D but the offset button will be 100 here which means it's well, one meter long and I'm going to make this 5 for now. Yep, there you go. It looks good for a helicopter body and then I'm going to go to display to turn my grid shading so that um, I don't know if how do you say that please put it in the comment box how do you pronounce this word grud i don't know man like i've been saying grud all my life but maybe i'm wrong put it in the comment box how you say it would be nice to know and maybe <clears throat> excuse me i'll change my subdivisions to five just so that it you know it's into quads and all and then I will copy this and paste it and then put it on <clears throat> I'll take another spline put this on okay now this is gonna be very useful uh, later this shape right here sometimes when you use your extrude tool depending on your the way you made your path I think it has something to do with positives and negatives so sometimes you may need to say negative 5 so that um, it, they all face they all extrude to the same direction negative 5 see now it sort of matches the initial shape which 
in this case is positive 5 and for some reason this layer needs to be in negative i'll go back and say this i'm gonna extrude this instead of negative 5 i'm gonna make it uh let's say 10 because like i said it's gonna be useful a little bit later because we need to make a hole here which is gonna give us an opportunity to learn about booleans um to make a hole here using another shape now i'm gonna copy the first one again and put it on top so i'm gonna do this pretty much for all of my shapes I copy paste and then delete this i'm gonna copy and paste the extrude shape on its own so that everything is all set very fast and then now everything has been turned into 3d so for some reason like you see all the values are 5 or negative 5 which means they are all they all have the same thickness but we don't want that right because like <laughs> helicopters are not like this <laughs> uh, so get rid of that so now we are going to take it one by one and see which one has to be reduced which one has to be increased i'm going to take this one right here i don't know which is it yeah it's the back propeller so the back propeller, I'm going to make it like two. Uh, two is still thick. I'm going to make it 0.5. Okay. The offset 0.5. And then I'm going to take this one too. And then I'm going to make it 0.5 as well. So they are all equal. And I'm going to take this guy's uh, Alt G to group them. And then I'm gonna pull them aside because they are propellers after all. Then put them there. So nicely sit. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the the rotor at the top. So I'm gonna take this one. Let me see. And yeah, is the rotor. I'm gonna make it 0.5 as well. 0.5. <clears throat> there and then I want to put it on the center somewhere here then I'm going to take this this one I'm going to make it 0.25 so there we go and then I'm want to make put it on the center of the rotor <coughs> so it's it's as easy as that so literally if you're here to see how to convert this into 3d then good for you you've gotten what you, you came here for how to make a vector into 3d good for you but if you wanna <clears throat> see boolean through it's time for you to stay there's still some nice cleanups that have to be done and i'm gonna show you uh, very soon for example then now that I, the, the group that i made of the propellers i can literally say connect objects plus delete and then now these things are these shapes are editable. I can literally edit those. And I'm doing this mostly because I want to put the anchor point in the center. As you have seen, the anchor point of these ex extrusions are not in the center of the object. So I'm gonna come here which is tools axis and then center axis tool. It will snap at the center of this polygon right here. The one that I made. And this function of centering the axis to the object it only works if the object is editable which means right now we are no longer able to manipulate that extrusion so you only do it when you are certain that's what you want and <clears throat> i can also press t to sort of manipulate the thickness of that propeller at the back there so which is a kind of nice uh you know sort of clean up to do at the end and then i'm gonna come back to this one then i'm gonna do the same thing as well i'm gonna left click connect oblac objects plus delete and then go to tools center axis 2 so now it's in the center i can make it a little bit thicker and then make it a little bit thinner at the top move it nicely and then it, even for this one i can copy and paste it and then change the transformation rotation 90 degrees so that it 
has four parts and then group it and then connect objects plus delete oh, oh. yeah connect objects plus this so that it is a one object i can take this one too and then same thing <clears throat> make it editable and then tools center access to so now these things if i they are they are a one thing now i can take this rotor and put it on the rotor or arm control so now if i rotate this it works nicely for so for the sake of this i'm gonna you know sort of like animate that then make it like literally thousands more animate it so that it's like a nice spin to it there you go it works really cool for me and i can take this one too and add some animation to it i'm gonna because it, it isn't the the, the 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 anchor point is in the center so that's the nice thing about the center axis 2 function you can, you can put your stuff in there it puts your then right in the center oh, oh wrong value of oh, my bad yeah this one so yep Yep, it's that one. Keyframe that and keyframe that and then literally change the function. There we go. So now we have like a really nice helicopter moving. And there are other things like I wanna show about making this making this propellers move indefinitely. But again, hey, we are doing so much now, <laughs> unrelated to uh, 2D to 3D. So now we have this body right here. What do I want to do? I want to make a hole here or sort of like just like make a negative space there. Um, so I'm going to press shift C and then type B O O. You'll see the bull mesh generator there and you drop both of this into that. So we want to take another extrude and put it on top. Because like sometimes if you don't rename your layers, this is what will happen. <laughs> and then you'll say, um, let's see what this is. This is the body. This is the body, and this is the whole. Yeah. So see now you have your bow. It's making a negative space in a positive space. So like good. Now our helicopter is working really well. I can if I'm content with this shape and. A helicopter body I can you know make it editable and then like come here and say connect objects plus delete to make it just like one object and then redo this center axis to so it's gonna put it in the center now I have all these things going this is my this is my roto yeah roto have a and then I don't know if it's called propeller for a helicopter pack, but hey, there you go. And then we say body. And then I'm gonna get rid of this because we are not dealing with texturing right now. So there you go. A nice little from 2D to 3D. There you go. And then group this together and call heli. Nice. So I said I wanted to show you something earlier, something that has to deal with the animations for the rotors, basically. Uh, it's not important if you came here for 2 d to 3D, this is done, we are done here, but if you want to continue watching, thank you uh, for sticking. But we are going to go to the propeller and say, we are looking for something called show F caps. And for some reason for me they never show up instantly so i will have to go back and do that again show f caps there they are this is the first keyframe this is the last keyframe of the animation and then i'm gonna come here i'm gonna select all of them drag just select both of them and say key nope i think it's bear with me it's one of this is it yeah functions and then i'm gonna say track after and then I say continue after mind you I have to make this linear because you know 
for for continuous sort of animation you just have to be linear and then i'm going to increase my animations to show you why continuous uh why to show you why Play across them before yeah why continue after is important because you can only put continue after is important because i have two keyframes but then you see this line is going up indefinitely which means i don't have to put a the last keyframe there or further away i can even bring this keyframe really closer together this keyframes closer together to demonstrate that you know bringing them closer together in it's even gonna go indefinitely so i'm gonna do the same thing for the roto so the keyframe is on the swap so you show f calves there we go and then i'm gonna say functions track after continue after and then i'm gonna make this one's linear as well then maybe pull this one closer so that it's as fast as well so here you go now we have our little helicopter in motion and i like doing things like this that's why i'm continuing <laughs> with this tutorial but uh, i'm gonna do add some motion to it here and then which is height yeah just like a little bit and then I'm gonna go back here and 0 20 and then at 40 I'm gonna duplicate that this keyframe put it there at 40 so it's going up and down let's see that motion uh oh is it going up and down going down yeah okay let's see that yeah it's going up really good so I'm gonna copy that keyframe uh, this one right here I'm gonna copy this one that height and then paste it here and then I'm gonna increase it just by a little bit uh, I'm gonna increase it oh, why is it not going up yeah there you go just increase it a little bit so that it doesn't move far pardon me and then i'm gonna say same thing again show f calves uh, but at first i want to come here and then disable all these other keyframes yeah because i don't need them yeah, so now it's clean i'm gonna take this yeah you see those keyframes select all of them and then come to functions track after and then continue out oh i didn't see my black line continue oscillate after okay yeah so now because we have three keyframes here i think oscillate after works much better so now here you go ash uh, to bring your model close and then there you go we have our little helicopter going on here uh it was a 3d now it's at the, it was a 2d now it's 3d with a little bit of motion and a boolean um, mini tutorial in between Thank you guys. Please like and comment, share. Peace out.